A British judge who ordered that a woman could not testify in court while wearing a Muslim veil covering her whole face except her eyes has fueled debate. A recent poll suggested that 67% of Britons support a ban on Muslim women covering their faces. Well, Polly Boyko has been to gauge public opinion in London on a subject which is proving highly divisive. Two weeks ago, students at a college in Birmingham accused their teachers of religious discrimination when the college tried to impose a ban on full-face veils. 9,000 students signed a protest petition, and the ban was subsequently dropped. But the war of opinions isn't dying down. I don't think it helps their integration by using a full-face veil. You know, as long as the face can be seen um, to some extent. You know, expressions count for a lot. They shouldn't be judged because you can't see their face. It's just their religion and that's what they want, that's what they want to wear, so you should let them wear it. Uh, I don't think they should ban it at all because it's, it's up to the people how they it's just any and like any other type of clothing. Yeah, I think there should be a law. Like for example, airports or uh, even just shops, places where they interact with people, especially people who don't know them, because it's, it's very difficult to speak to a blank sort of surface. You, you want to speak to someone, you don't want to speak to just eyes. Well, to talk about the issue, I'm joined by columnist Nabila Ramdani. Nabila, France and Belgium have imposed blanket bans on the niqab in public spaces, but Britain prides itself on being a multicultural nation. How do you think the government is supposed to respond on the issue here? Well, the experience in France has proved to be a complete failure. It has really uh, pitted communities against each other and it has led crucially to an increase in the suspicion and indeed hatred against Muslim communities. And I firmly believe that it's not in the DNA, if I may put it that way, of the British uh, to indeed stifle liberties. The, assault, the ban in itself is an assault against fundamental human rights. But surely this isn't a religious issue, this is a professional issue and surely there are some circumstances when the niqab simply isn't appropriate. For example, when you're teaching children, providing evidence in court or treating a patient in hospital. I'm by no means an advocate of the niqab and uh, I do think that there should be res restrictions against the niqab in certain uh, situations like you've just pointed out. And but we, what we're talking about is the expression of prejudice against a religion. Uh, there, there's a tiny minority of women wearing the niqab uh, that it would be uh, you know, ridiculous to legislate against an entire uh, religion effectively. Nabila Ramdani, thank you very much for your comments. Well, while Britain prides itself on its individual rights and ethnic tolerance, the debate is waging on and the government may find that it can no longer maintain an official silence on the issue. Reporting from London, I'm Polly Boyko. Well, Britain is not the only country pulled into a debate over Muslim clothing. In recent years, a number of European states have moved to prohibit the full-face veil. Rina Golushka takes a look. Who would have expected a dress code to become such a heated topic of political debate? And yet, the issue of the Muslim veil and variations thereof has gripped not one, not two, but several European states. France, home to the largest Muslim community in Western Europe, with some five million followers, became the first country to ban the full-face veil in public places in 2011. Any woman breaking the rule faces a penalty of around 150 euro and a lesson in citizenship. Those forcing a woman to cover her face are looking at a much stiffer fine of up to 30,000 euro. Neighboring Belgium followed suit just months afterwards with a similar ban on the Muslim veil that covers the full face. Though the fine here is slightly lower, the maximum punishment could result in a seven-day jail term. A similar ban on face covering in public is to become effective this year in the Netherlands, home to roughly a million Muslims. Although scholars say out of that number only a few hundred women wear niqabs or burqas, which either leave the eyes open or cover the entire face. Between three and three and a half million Muslims live in Germany, the second largest Islamic population in Europe after France. There is no universal ban here, but the state of Hesse banned its civil servants from wearing headscarves and veils following an eight-year-old ruling from the federal constitutional court, which left the issue up to individual states to decide. Both in Spain and Italy, moves have been made in the past to outlaw niqabs and burqas, as well as headscarves for Muslims. But in those both predominantly Catholic countries, Supreme Courts or legal ministers have thrown such propositions out, citing them as unconstitutional. 
And in the Swiss canton of Ticino, two-thirds of the population voted in favor of a ban on face-covering veils, and the ban is currently awaiting approval by the federal parliament. These developments across the European continent are raising the question, is there a broader clash within liberal values themselves when the right to religious identity is pinned against the need for all to respect the law?